<coughs> All right, we just got done talking about thermal expansion. And uh, we talked about the bimetallic strip again and the thermostat. And um, now we're going on to um, this uh, worksheet that I gave today. <coughs> All right, let's take a look at the first one. It says here, steel expands by about one part in 100,000 for each one uh, degree Celsius increase in temperature. So here's this equation that would scare most people, and it looks kind of scary, but let's make it unscary. What do you think delta L means? Yeah, a difference in length means um, how much longer is it going to get? Get that? If, if it's a... Um, if it's a 20 foot piece of iron, it's gonna, if it goes to 21 inches, the delta L is one inch, isn't it? How much is it gonna change? The change in the length of the metal has to do with um, what's called, here's a fancy way, here, an engineer would call it the, the coefficient of linear expansion. The coefficient of linear expansion. You say, what is that? Well, in this case for steel, it's a one, it'll expand one in every 100,000 parts. And then L, zero, in physics, they always like to put zero mean original. So L is simply the original length, and then delta T is what? Everybody? Delta T? Not time. Change in what? Change in temperature, okay? So let's try it. How much longer will a piece of steel 100 millimeters long be when its temperature is increased by 10 degrees? So let's try the math, okay? Let's do some math. Um, delta L, the change in the length will be, what's the coefficient of linear expansion? Uh, one over what? 100,000? Now, if you remember some stuff from first semester, if you don't want to write one over 100,000, what else could you write? What? 10 to the fifth. Oh, you're close. One over 10 to the fifth is the same as what? Negative. 10 to the negative fifth. So if you want to write 10 to the negative fifth here, <clears throat> you can, but it's one in every 100,000 pieces. That's what this piece. Now, what's the original length? 1,000 millimeters. And then what's the change in temperature? What, how much are you going to change the temperature by? There you go. Increase by 10 Celsius degrees. All right, there we go. Put that in the calculator and let's see how much long. And now <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that 1,000 millimeters is a meter. So we got a piece of steel this big and you're going to make it uh, temperature go up by 10 degrees. How much longer is it going to get? You have a number already? Okay. Do I have the number? Yes, we got. That's right. Uh, point one millimeter. Now, you know why this guy's smiling? Because what they did is they put this in a vise, they put this thing here, and they put it right next to his stomach, and then they're going to heat it up ten degrees, and he's smiling because guess what? How much longer is it going to get? You know, the millimeter is. A tenth of a millimeter is like, you know, less than that paper. So he's smiling. He said, ah, who cares about linear expansion? They don't have, nobody has to worry about linear expansion. Yes? Is this like the experiment where, like, the physics teacher will take a student and then, like, someone will work at them and it'll be fairly missing? Is that a different... What do they do? That's a pendulum. Um, a pendulum, um, the physics teacher will stand there with uh, a real heavy uh, weight right next to their uh, face. Don't do that, by the way, unless I teach you how to do it. But you put it right next to your face, and as long as you don't push it when you let go, uh, it only has so much potential energy, change the kinetic energy. It should never hit you in the face uh, as long as you don't push it. Uh, but you have to sit there because you got this big, you got this big heavy thing coming toward your face, and you you tend to want to flinch and like there. All right, so the person is smiling because, come on, um, how about, uh, says, how about a 1,000 a meters, a 1,000 meter? So let's say you have a piece of steel that is uh, called a kilometer. Uh, now, that's a big piece of steel, about, about um, 
little over half a mile. So you got a little pretty big piece of steel. How much longer will it get? And I'll get, you'll get, I'll bet you're still going to get 0.1, aren't you? 0.1 what? And that's about 10 centimeters. Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> a longer piece of steel is going to change by... So if I'm an engineer and I'm going to build a bridge and it's going to be more than a kilometer long, I better be ready because my bridge is going to get this much longer. And what's going to happen if I didn't allow uh, places for it to expand? <clears throat> it's going to buckle. <clears throat> All right. And it says, you place yourself between a wall and a uh, one meter piece of steel, blah, blah, blah. Discuss the consequences and uh, not, nothing's going to happen to you. Let's do this one, All right? The Eiffel Tower in Paris is 298 meters tall. On a cold night, it is shorter than that on a summer day. What is the change in the height for, uh, for a 30 Celsius degree temperature difference? Now, it's still made out of steel. So how do we do this? The change in length equals what? What's the first thing we put down there? What's the coefficient of linear expansion for steel? One piece in every what? 100,000, I got that piece down. I got the, I got the coefficient of, friction of um, linear expansion. What's L0, what's L0? The original length, 298 meters. And what's the change in temperature? Okay, and I'll put that in there. <clears throat> and the Eiffel Tower in the summer is how much taller than the Eiffel Tower in the winter? Yeah. Um, 0 0.0894 meters. Wait, what is it? 0 0.0894 meters. Meters, right? Yeah. So if I change that to centimeters, it's going to be about 8.9. Did everybody get this number, same number? Yeah. So it's about 8.9 centimeters. Wait, you said, yeah, 8.9 centimeters. Now, that's about like this. So the Eiffel Tower in the summer is this much taller than it is in the winter. So again, with a small piece of metal, uh, the consequences aren't great. You start getting to a bigger piece of metal, you have to think about this. And if you're an engineer, you have to think about it for sure. This is something I did yesterday. Do you remember we had the, the ring and the ball barely fit through it? Did I do that yesterday? And the question is, if I heat the ring, uh, it's gonna get bigger, but if it gets bigger, will the hole in the middle, will it make everything bigger and make the hole in the middle smaller? And when I first saw that, I said, I thought for sure the hole would get smaller because I thought everything would get bigger. So the author did this little thing here where he says, I'm going to try to prove to you uh, which way it actually happens. So what he did, instead of a full circle, he made a C shape. Now, can everybody see that box right there? All I want you to do is come over here and make the box bigger. Make it longer and make it taller. All right, so each little square is gonna get bigger. So don't make it the same size. Let's go down here, let's make it bigger. Okay, is that, look, that's bigger than that, isn't it? And then I gotta make this part bigger, so I'll go over here. There's my square. Okay, everybody got that? So I made this square bigger, because it's expanded, expanded uh, lengthwise and heightwise. Now, let's build the next one. What goes next to it? Build the same size. Okay, there we go. Oh, I gotta build another one now. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, go ahead and keep doing that and then see if you can answer the questions here. <clears throat> is the circle in here gonna get bigger and is the gap right here, is it gonna close down and be smaller or is it gonna be bigger? Right. So anyway, I thought it was a pretty good, uh, I've never seen anybody do this, because um, when I first saw that, I thought for sure the ring 
the hole in the ring would get smaller. But after they forced me to draw this, notice that what happens to the size of the circle here? Bigger or smaller? And what about the gap? It's bigger. And so just same thing for the ring. The ring does get bigger on the outside and it also the hole gets bigger also at the same time. And then the last thing is uh, this one, I'm gonna have you uh, try it at home. But they, the question says, the equatorial radius of the earth is about that many kilometers. Consider a 40,000 kilometer long piece of steel pipe that forms a giant ring that fits snugly around the equator of the earth. Suppose that people all along the length uh, were to breathe on it to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. The pipe will get longer. It's also no longer snug. How high will it stand above the ground? I'll give you a little clue on how to do it. Right now, when it's snug on the ground, it has a certain circumference, doesn't it? If it has a certain circumference, um, that's uh, diameter times pi. Is that right? Is that correct? Okay, now, um, or we can do 2 pi r, like that. So what I like to do is um, do the same equation where you plug this in for there and you have uh, 1 over 10 to the fifth. So we get 1 over 10 to the fifth, the delta L equals, and then what's the um, original length is 40,000 kilometers. There we go. And, and then uh, what is the change in temperature? 1 Celsius, 1 degree Celsius. Anyway, so what's going to happen is you're going to find out that what is the change in the length. So that means instead of the original circumference, it'll be the new circumference will be that much longer. Okay, sorry. So let's pretend. Let's pretend that we get a number like, if the original circumference is 40,000, what if we get a number like 1,000? What's the new circumference of the pipe? It wouldn't be 40,000 plus 1, 41,000. And then you go back and figure out what the radius is. Okay, so um, find out what the radius is right now. Find out the radius here. They give it to you. Um, and then find out the radius of the new circle and then see how much uh, goes up. And you'll be surprised. Uh, the answer is actually in the book on page uh, 418. So if you want to take a look at that, you can do that. <clears throat> okay, now, uh, the, the thing I want to spend uh, a little more time on today, uh, the most amount of time, and, and it's probably one of the harder things of the chapter, uh, but I'm going to do it today and tomorrow. So we're going to spend a couple of days on it. And uh, if you have this handout sheet here, this little packet, I'm going to show you um, something that is kind of, kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. And it's a word called uh, specific heat. And um, it's definitely a physics thing. And um, I'm, I'm going to read the definition here. It says, um, uh, you know what I didn't do? I mean, I'm going to think about this. Did we talk about uh, calories yesterday? Okay, so let's just go back. Let me review that before I get to the specific heat. If you want to measure um, heat, um, they wanted to have a really simple definition. And does anybody remember the definition for a calorie of heat? Wait, what was it? The energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. They must have done a good job because you remembered after just hearing it once, didn't you? They wanted to make it simple, didn't they? If you take one gram of water and raise it by one Celsius degree, that takes one calorie of energy, heat energy, right? Now, unfortunately, uh, the food companies figured out that humans don't like little tiny numbers and stuff like that. So what are they, uh, what is a food calorie? A thousand physics calories, isn't it? And the food calorie has a big C in it, and, and the physics calorie is a little C calorie, like that. So that's just a minor thing. That's just because um, they want to do that. And by the way, I won't have you memorize this, but I will tell you that uh, a calorie is the same as 4.186 joules. And in the, uh, in the physics world, all energy electrical, uh, magnetic, uh, heat energy, all energy is measured in joules. All right, have you ever heard that word before I said it today? Oh, good. So it's actually becoming a little more mainstream. 
Where did you hear about it? Was it a surge protector you had or something like that? Uh, it was a what was it? <laughs> okay. So um, anyway, so any kind of energy can be uh, in joules like that. Yes. Okay, so I want to review that a little bit for you. Now, look right here, and let's see what it says here. What is the specific heat capacity uh, of a material? The specific heat capacity of a material is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit of mass of the material by one Celsius degree. Oh, wait a minute. I just, we just said something like that, didn't we? And you know what they did? I will make everything simple. What is the specific heat for water? It's just like they, remember the metric system when they said one kilogram of mass is the same as one liter of water? Remember that? Everything was simple, wasn't it? What is the specific heat of water? Like, meaning, how much heat would it take to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one Celsius degree? What is it? One. Huh, I can remember that. The specific heat of water in these units, in these units, is one. If I were to convert it into joules, this says, and look at this right here. You've never seen this before. You've never seen something that had a unit. Look at the units. It's calories per what? Calories per gram Celsius degree. See, it's calories per gram Celsius degree. That's a weird unit, isn't it? Anyway, and if I were to change it to joules, it'd be 4.186 uh, joules per gram Celsius degree. Now, in order for me to have you understand this, we just need to do some problems. So we're going to do some problems, and uh, we're going to talk about specific heat. Now, once you look over here, okay, your mind has to be twisted a little bit, a little bit. Look right here. Who has one of the highest specific heats of any of the things on that chart? By far. Who has one of the highest specific heats? Water. One's not a very big number. <clears throat> look at those other numbers. 0.031, 0.031. Uh, 107. So let me, uh, I need your attention here because <clears throat> first time I heard this, it didn't make sense to me. If you have a small specific heat, a low number, it only takes a little bit of energy and your temperature will go whoop. See that? If you have a small specific heat, a little bit of heat will make your temperature go whoop up there like that. See that? What if you have a large specific heat? It takes a lot of energy to raise the temperature by one Celsius degree. You get that? And that's what's so amazing to me when I read this now, because we live on a planet that has an atmosphere. That's good. We have a planet that has a lot of ocean in it, doesn't it? It has a lot of water in it. You have a lot of water in you. Almost everything alive has a lot of water in it. And yet water is one of those very, very special materials. If I go to the moon, and the sun shine on me, it's going to be over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. If the sun is not shining on me, I'm on the dark side, if I'm, on, I'm where the sun's not shining, it'd be minus 220 degrees. Why? Why such a big fluctuation? There's no water. There's no, nothing. There's no atmosphere. Why is in the desert? You can essentially almost bake to death. You can almost die of the heat in the, sun, in the, in the daytime. But then you say, wow, finally the sun's going down. You are not out of danger. What happens in the desert at night? It gets freezing cold. How is that possible? <laughs> because there's almost no water in the atmosphere. So imagine God, here's this planet. <clears throat> he says, I'm going to give you a thing where when the sunlight comes in, it won't bake you. It's, it's a lot of the energy is going to go into the ocean. It's going to go into the water. And even when you eat food, we eat food and all that energy is coming out. I'm not going to let it kill your cells because you got a lot of water in there. And so the energy is going to go into water and said, that water can hold a lot of heat and it's still not going up very much. So, so I can be on a planet where you should be baked. 
but the water is absorbing so much energy and still not raising by only one degree or two degrees. That, and then at night, guess what happens? At night, what happens? The sun's out there. You should freeze, but you don't because what does the water do at night? It gives, it releases the heat. Whoa, what a great plan. What a great plan. <clears throat> and so I want you to think about that, what that means. Now, if I look at something like copper, that's really small, isn't it? What are you going to do with something that has a really tiny, specific heat? I'm going to make a frying pan. Why? Because when I turn that burner on, even a little bit of heat is going to do what to the copper pan? What's well, going to happen to the temperature of the pan? Boink. That's what I want. I'm a, the worst frying pan you could make is one made out of water, isn't it? Oh, that's a frying egg. Oh, that'll be about 30 minutes from now. So you want something with a low specific heat that it'll raise its temperature very, very quickly. So does that make sense to you now? So now it's not so scary. It's called a specific heat constant. And it is constant, uh, just like pi is a constant, just like a lot of things are constant there, okay? All right, so what's interesting is the definition of the calorie, how much um, heat it takes to raise one gram, one Celsius degree, that is one calorie, see? It takes one calorie per gram Celsius degree. And that's how it works. So now, <clears throat> this is where we get into the uh, mathematics, okay? <clears throat> uh, remember I told you twice, I said, if I said, if you let me um, pour either a thimble full of boiling water or 10 gallons of 80 degrees Celsius water on your face, I said, okay, I don't want you to, but I'll do the thimble. And you were smart because even though the temperature was higher, you knew that the 10 gallons of 80 degrees Celsius water, you knew that that could cause a lot of damage. Something in your mind said, there's a lot of particles in there. And that's what this equation is here. Now, <clears throat> I have to look up, I forget why they wanna use Q, but Q stands for the amount of heat gained or heat lost. So, <clears throat> so Q is, heat gained or heat loss. So that's what we're gonna calculate. We're gonna calculate how much total heat is gained by something or lost by something. So heat gained or lost equals MC delta T. MC delta T, see? MC delta T. What do you think M stands for? Mass. What do you think the C stands for? And I'll put a little uh, subscript, maybe SH or something like that. C subs SH. The what? Specific heat, constant. Okay, and I'll give you a chart for that. I'll give you a chart for that. And I'll give you the mass, see? And then I'll tell you the change in temperatures right there. And there you go. Now, for those of you, it's important. I know some of you like math a lot. And sometimes in here, you like to do physics problems without showing your labels. And I always take off points, don't I? You hate me for that, that's fine. But promise you, um, you have to pay attention to the labels. Because, for example, uh, in order for me to get this right here, it has to be in what kind of units? And so in this case, this thing here is in calories per gram Celsius degree. So my mass has to be in what? Look right here. I want calories to be the only thing that doesn't cancel out. So if the specific heat is in calories per gram Celsius degree, you better have your mass in grams and you better have your temperature in Celsius, right there? That's, just pay attention to it. So if I give it to you in kilograms, you say, I can't use that. I gotta change that to grams. And then you'll, the only thing left will be calories and calories are, calories and joules are the two units you'll use in physics for heat, heat gained or heat lost. Did I lose you on that at all? <coughs> you okay? We're gonna do a problem here, okay? <clears throat> all right, let's go over here. <clears throat> um, look at this right here. <clears throat> I got this out of a book. And um, look what it says here. These are specific heat constants, but what are the units? What are the units here? Joules per what? Kilogram Celsius degree. So I have to pay attention. I see that. If I want these things to, to work out, I got I to gotta have in kilograms. I gotta have in Celsius degrees and I'll be left with joules. Joules are heat gained or heat loss. Joules are energy, right? Heat is energy. <clears throat> now, um, 
I'm going to show you something here. Uh, this right here is a neat little thing. And if I told you about, um, if you want to start a new product, now, hey, I got a new hot dog on the market. Uh, you have to pay a company quite a bit of money, and they'll do some very scientific tests on your hot dog. And they'll put it in one of these, and it's called a bomb calorimeter. A calorimeter is something that measures calories, okay? And a bomb calorimeter means they're going to put it in this thing here. It's got an inner compartment to it, and it's got some water in it. And your little hot dog's in there, and they're going to, it's going to be hooked on to something like electricity. And they're going to push a button, and they're going to make that electricity go into that hot dog, and it's going to burn that hot dog, and that hot dog's going to give off energy. Now, the hot dog is going to lose inner heat energy, and the water that surrounds it is going to gain the energy. Keep looking at your eyes. I need to know where you're at. Does that make sense to you? Because that's, that's one of the biggest ideas. And, and the biggest idea is heat lost by one object has to equal heat gained by another object. So I'm, I'm looking at your faces again. This calorimeter says if that hot dog loses energy, the water is sitting there ready to gain that energy. So if I can measure how much energy <clears throat> the water gained, I'll know how much energy the hot dog lost. <clears throat> and that's what they do. And then they put it in uh, physics calories, then they change it to food calories. And they say, here you go, here's your certification. You can go ahead and advertise that that's how many calories your hot dog has in it. So one more time. <clears throat> um, now, if that, we don't have time for a lab. I'd love to do this lab. Uh, the only reason I don't really like it as well is because um, it's so hard to get anything less than like 30% error. But here's what we do. I want you to imagine I take this uh, piece of metal. Let's say it's a piece of copper. And I put it in some boiling water, 100 degrees, right? And then I got, uh, let's say I have a Starbucks cup and I have a lid and I have an exact amount of water in the Starbucks cup. I measure how much water is in there, right? I take some tongs and I got some, a uh, 100 degree piece of metal, 100 degrees Celsius, ready? And what I would do is I put it in there I put it in the Starbucks cup because it's insulated. And, and the water, what would happen to the piece of metal when I put it into the uh, room temperature water? Which way does heat always travel? High temperature, to low. High temperature to low temperature, right? And so the metal is going to lose heat and the water is going to gain heat. And what, what's always the same? Uh, unfortunately, the cup Unfortunately, the cup actually gains a little bit of heat. That's why you have bad percent error. See that? You also, when you transfer it, you lose a little bit there. That's why I don't, it's okay if I don't do that lab because it doesn't give you great results like there. All right, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to see if we can do a calorimetry problem. So everybody ready to stay with me? Uh, whatever you're doing, don't do anything else except this calorimetry problem, okay? Now, I think what I'll do, I think I put it in here. Yeah, here it is right here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this is going to look almost exactly like one of the sheets on the test. So of the part of the test that's not multiple choice, it's going to look like this. A physics teacher has 100 grams of metal that was heated to 100 degrees. Then the student drops the metal into a beaker containing 150 grams of water with an initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Now... The final temperature of the metal and the water are both 25.46 degrees Celsius. Now, this is the first time you've ever done this in your life, so let's take our time with it, and tomorrow we'll review it, okay? <coughs> first of all, <coughs> we have heat gain and we have heat loss. So, <coughs> how much heat is gained by the water? What's the equation? What do you think? Uh, Kenzie, you remember the equation for... Heat gain or heat loss starts with a Q. And it's kind of like a rap song. It's like a real small rap song. Q equals MC um, G. Delta. Delta. Delta T. MC Delta T. <coughs> All right, so ready? And what material is this? Which material uh, gained heat? Which one? Was it the metal or the water? All right, so let's put water here, okay? 
let's make sure that we know we're talking about the water. <clears throat> so the heat gained by the water has to equal the mass of the water. What's the mass of the water? Find it. Yes. 150 grams, you found it, of water. What is the specific heat for what? For what material? Water. Let's go find it. And I'll tell you what, um, I, can, I have my choice, don't I? It says calories per gram Celsius degree or joules. Let's do the calorie. Let's do calories. How about that? What is the specific heat for water? Oh, I remember that. You said that was one what? One calorie per what? Gram Celsius degree. All right. And <clears throat> what is the chain? Ooh, watch now. <clears throat> Let's do that down here. What is delta T for the water? How do you find delta anything? Remember that? It's the second value minus the first value. What's the second temperature of the water? Say it again. 24. Oh, okay, 25.46. And what was the initial temperature of the water? 20, yes. What is delta T for the water? <clears throat> is everybody with me on this? Okay, so now I actually know I can put that up here for delta T. It comes out to be 5.46 um, degrees Celsius. <clears throat> All right, let's put that in a calculator and let's find out. And what is the only unit left? What's the only unit? Watch now. Cancel. Goodbye. Goodbye. What's the only thing left? <clears throat> calories. And calories is heat. Joules are heat. <clears throat> so what do you got? Uh, who, who's the calculator? Patty, what do you got? Oh, yeah, do your calculator, so. Colleen, you got it? Yes. One more time. 19? Yeah. Even? Okay. Okay. And what's the units? Um, what's the only thing not canceled up here? Oh, my bad. Calories. Calories. And remember, calories and joules are the two units you might look for if you're looking for uh, heat energy. You get that? <clears throat> now, are you okay so far with that? <clears throat> now, if something's going to happen here that you're going to think is not right, and what I'd like to do is, let's go ahead, um, what is the specific heat of the metal? How, I don't even know what the metal is. And so let me show you this. <clears throat> <clears throat> Shoot, let's go down here. Let's do number three before we do number two. Let's do number three first. How much heat was lost by the metal? Eli, you look like you know. Without picking up the calculator, how much heat was lost by the metal? Uh, probably around 800 Yes. <clears throat> Is that right? So the heat lost by the metal has to equal the heat gained by the water. <clears throat> so how much heat was lost by the metal? Uh, probably around 819 calories. You got that? Everybody got that? So you can't forget that because you won't be able to do this problem. You'll, you'll On a test, you'll say, I don't know. How much heat was lost by the metal? I don't know. It's the same as the heat gained by the water. <clears throat> yes? Now we can do number two. Let's go number two. Q equals, and this is for the metal, Q equals M C delta T for the metal. <clears throat> All right, tell me what numbers do I know? Uh, Lillian, tell me, tell me one number that I can plug in. Yes, oh, here, 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 where? 
for which one? And I hate to use Q, but Q means, <clears throat> I would use H, H, but Q means heat gained or heat lost. So we're, so we're gonna put it here, right? 819 calories equals, <clears throat> Jessica, give me another number I can plug in. 100 grams, did you find it up here somewhere? <clears throat> oh, there it is, there it is right there. Very good. <clears throat> um, Jeff, give me another number I can plug in. It's gotta be this or that. I'll give you a clue. They want you to find that so you don't know it. What's delta T for the metal? Uh-oh, what's delta T for the metal? What's the final temperature of the metal? How much? No? Look up here. 25.46. Now watch what happens here. Minus, minus what? How hot was it when it started? <clears throat> yes. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. <clears throat> We're going to get a negative number. <clears throat> and what that simply means is that um, plus Q means that you gained heat and negative means you you gave off. You lost it. <clears throat> All right. Give me, <clears throat> anybody give me a quick hit on that? It's going to be about 74 point. Five, four. Okay. Let's go up here. 75.54. And that's uh, degrees Celsius. <clears throat> now let's try it again. I'm going to stop for a minute. I don't want to go any faster than you can handle. <clears throat> if you didn't understand that heat gained by one object is heat lost by another, you won't know where I got this number. You get that? So... And then it's M, the mass of the metal, the specific heat of the metal, and the delta T for the metal. <clears throat> you know what's interesting? You know what blows people away? I always ask this question. Delta T for the water equals delta T for the metal. <clears throat> he said, and everybody says, yeah, you said something like that. You said something about it was equal. <clears throat> oh, is that right? Is that right? Does delta T for the metal equal delta T for the water? <clears throat> he said, not even close. Whose temperature changed huge amounts, huge amounts? The metal or the water? The metal, and you know why? Because it has what kind of specific heat? A really small one. <clears throat> Don't ever think that delta T for both objects has to be the same. I never said that. What I said is heat, heat gain, equals heat loss. Now, you guys, are you go, go to math? Can you, um, let's go ahead and figure out the uh, units, by the way. Um, hey, nothing cancels. Nothing cancels. <clears throat> so it's going to be in um, calories per gram Celsius degree. So does everybody know how to do this on a calculator? This divided by that, divided by that. Can you do that? This divided by that, and also divided by that. Isn't that right? You know how you do it real fast? And now how you do it the fast way? All right, this divided by 100, and then go ahead and divide by 74.54. And all right, what do you get? <coughs> uh, who haven't I called on yet? Ben, <coughs> do, you have, do you know how to do this? 819 divided by 100, and then say divided by 75.54. Isn't it supposed to be 74.54? Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, sorry. Thank you. Good job, Jeff. <clears throat> what do you got, Ben? 74.45. Is that what just divided by two? Oh, five, four. So you take 819, divide by 100, divide by 74.54. Uh, I don't think I got it right. You got like 0 0.11. Is that what you got? Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. Zero point or point zero? What is zero? Yeah, zero point. Wait, all right, after the decimal. 111? One, one, one. <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the question is, we know that metal has a specific heat of 0.111. Go find it. Okay. What metal is it? 
All right. And you got to remember your units, right? Aha. Uh -huh. What do you think? Now, every year, I put one of these on the test, okay? And every year, about three students act like they're mad at me. And here's what, the only thing I did change, I changed the numbers, of course. Everybody get that? I changed the numbers. But the only thing I do is I say that the metal has a final temperature of 25.46. And that's the only thing I change on the test. And so I have about three students a year, they get angry because, well, you didn't tell me what the final temperature of the water was going to be. What do you think? What do you think? It wasn't one of the big ideas here that uh, what would happen if a metal had one temperature and the water it's sitting in had a different temperature? They would eventually equalize each other, wouldn't they? The final temperature of the water has to be. It has to be the final temperature of the metal, doesn't it? Don't, don't get mad at me. If you, that's, that's a big idea in this chapter. You can't have something sitting there that's hotter than something next to it. It would eventually lose heat and they become the same temperature. What do you think about that? Was that, uh, was that too bad? We did two things today. We did uh, linear expansion. I said, well, that's not so bad. You're going to give me the equation. You're going to give me the, uh, the, the, uh, all the numbers, the, the constants. I can do that. And now how about these? Can you remember that heat gained by one object equals heat gained by lost by another? One thing you have to be careful about, one thing you have to be careful about, nine, 819, um, if you calculate this, you actually, you know what you end up getting? If you calculate it for the metal, you get negative 819. Now, the only thing that math teachers wouldn't like is they wouldn't like 819, say, is equal to negative 819. So if you do the physics on here, you have to, I made this word up, you have to negify one of them. So if one of them will come up to be 819, one of them will come up to negative 819. You just have to kind of disregard that negative sign, and then it works out. Okay. All right, now here's what I'd like you to do, all right? We're going to... Um, that worksheet that I gave you, I'd like to go ahead and it would probably take you about 10 minutes to finish it. And I'll give you a small grade for it. And even before you turn it in tomorrow, we can go over it. Have I got that? And then we'll finish out the chapter and we'll review. And then our test will be on, on Thursday.